offshore powerboat racing is one of the most glamorous sports in the world. There are no cheap thrills here. Known throughout the world as a rich man sport, the men that own and drive these offshore missiles are an elite cadre. Not only are they willing to go to great expense to maintain their high-tech, state-of-the-art equipment, but they are willing to accept the physical punishment that the sport inflicts. Racing in seas that sometimes exceed 10 feet at speeds of 90 miles per hour, the crews of offshore boats withstand shocks at a G-full of 15 to 20 times the force of gravity. It's not the lure of prize money that attracts these macho men to the sport, it's the sheer exhilaration of winning. To the uninitiated, offshore racing might look like a simple matter of raw speed. It is considerably more complex. Offshore racing is a fusion of human skill with precision, high-performance machinery. All of this takes place in an arena of grueling competition and Mother Nature's extreme conditions. Modern offshore race boats have become so sophisticated and complex that some claim there are more ways to go wrong than right. It is a major moral and mechanical victory just making the start in these races. It takes months of preparation and the hard work of many behind the scenes to prepare a boat for racing. Each boat represents a large investment in time and manpower as well as money. To the men who race these boats, the thrill of victory far outweighs the expense of defeat. Physically, offshore racing is a demanding sport. The crew must take hours of repeated shocks as the boats skip from wave to wave. Mentally, it demands total concentration. A momentary waver of attention can literally flip a speeding boat. Offshore racers are a tough breed. They have to be. Surviving the pounding torture of racing requires crews to be in top condition physically as well as mentally. Lightning reflexes and split-second judgment can make the difference between victory and tragedy. These boats don't just go to sea, they attack it. Racing on the open sea is not like any other type of motorsport competition. Offshore racers must match themselves against each other and the unforgiving sea. Generally, there are either two or three people in every offshore racing boat. The driver is responsible for planning the strategy and overall conduct of the race in addition to steering the boat. This may sound easy, but it requires a great amount of skill. The driver must steer through the waves, watch out for floating debris, and keep on the course set by the navigator. The second person in the race boat operates the throttles. The throttle man also acts as a co-driver. He is responsible for setting the boat's trim and knowing when to feather or charge on the throttles. If he miscalculates, the boat will go out of control. Excessive revving of the engine can result in mechanical failure. So a throttle man's job requires great concentration and attention to detail. The third person is the navigator who uses the compass, charts, and other materials to keep the boat on course. He must communicate effectively with the driver to make sure the boat stays on course. A miscalculation of even one degree over many miles could mean the difference between winning and being lost. The ability to find the way through unmarked, unfriendly seas, even with reduced visibility, is the hallmark of a good navigator. Frequently, either the navigator or the throttle man is a skilled mechanic who can repair problems that can arise during the race. Where there are only two people in the boat, one is the driver and the other a combination of throttle man and navigator. Some of the larger boats, most notably in the super boat class, have room for additional crew members. However, a maximum of four persons are permitted on board during any racing event. No two offshore courses are alike. With changing tides, currents, and weather conditions, no single course is exactly the same from day to day. Each offshore course is unique unto itself. A start-finish line, defined by a start-finish boat, marks the beginning and ending of the course. Prior to the race, participants are provided with a chart showing the layout of the course. The chart indicates the sequence in which each check boat must be passed. Contestants must pass by near enough to the check boats to be identified by the naked eye, but not closer than 25 yards. Failure to properly pass a checkpoint 
may result in disqualification or other penalties. Each class starts the race separately, with superboats going first. The racers group together in a milling area and follow the pace boat to the starting line. Officials at the start boat must determine that the fleet is lined up properly. When the green flag is raised, the pace boat turns off the course and the race is underway. The pace boat then leads the next class to the starting line. The procedure is repeated until all the classes have started. Participants must complete the course within a prescribed time limit. Should a boat break down, the crew on board may stop to repair or replace the damaged parts. All navigation must be done by the crew aboard the boat. Teams that attempt to use outside means, such as radio contact to shore or aircraft, are subject to disqualification. Generally, the first boat to finish in each class is the winner. However, penalties may result in a revision of the standings. Therefore, officials wait until all boats have finished before announcing the outcome. Participants have the right to appeal decisions of the referee to a protest jury, which is responsible for resolving disputes. There are three different types of races, national, divisional, and local. There are seven to ten races on the national circuit. They are spaced approximately three weeks apart. No divisional or local race can be scheduled to conflict with a national race date. National points are accrued, and the APBA High Point Championships are awarded at the end of the season. The first place finishing boat in each class receives 400 points. The second place finisher receives 300 points, with 225 points for third place, 169 points for fourth place, and so on down the line. All finishing drivers are awarded one point for every boat defeated in its class. Using a scoring system similar to the method used by NASCAR, a boat not able to finish the race will still be awarded place points. Boats are scored as they drop out of the event. But the race itself will officially be over 10 minutes following the finish of the last class winner crossing the finish line. Teams which qualify by starting in three events are eligible to compete in the three race world championship series. Offshore powerboat racing is a wildly exciting sport, unique in all the world for its bright spectacle of action and danger. It takes a special type of individual to climb into the cockpit of one of these offshore missiles, one who can handle flying across the water at speeds over 100 miles per hour, with thousands of horsepower hurtling him to his destiny or doom. Beyond the aspect of competition, there is an extremely valuable dimension to offshore racing. No laboratory can duplicate the stress, impact, vibration, and strain which ocean racing provides. Many key improvements in design, construction, and equipment for today's pleasure and commercial boats have come from offshore racing. Professional offshore powerboat racers must rely on high visibility and a winning record to attract corporate sponsors. Since offshore championships attract high-profile entries from all over the world, including movie stars, royalty, and international corporations, there's now a tangible benefit in being a world champion. Events such as racing afford corporations a chance to use lucrative target marketing on the 18 to 49-year-old audiences that support the sport. Last year, over 365 million people shared in offshore through print, television, radio, and race attendance. This year, the APBA has signed contracts with independent producers and syndication networks for broadcast and home video coverage of every race on the circuit. When you consider what it costs to produce and display television advertisement, it becomes clear why businesses are getting into sports sponsorships. Campaigning a well-known offshore powerboat presents a cost-effective return to sponsors in terms of media exposure and public relations. The more fans that attend offshore races, the easier it is to attract the corporate sponsors which are needed for a national racing campaign. In an effort to increase the awareness of all those who follow the offshore circuit, we are following introduction to the sport. What 
are super boats. Super boats are the newest class of boats in offshore racing. These boats are 35 to 50 feet in length and have unlimited cubic inch displacement if over 45 feet. The only real restriction is that the power plant must be an automotive or marine block. These boats will race over distances of 135 to 160 statute miles and will reach speeds over 150 miles per hour. These are the biggest and fastest boats in offshore racing. What is open class? Open class boats are the APBA class that coincides with the prestigious UIM-1 class. These boats range from 35 to 50 feet in length. They are allowed up to 1,000 cubic inch displacement from a power plant of automotive or marine block with certain restrictions. These boats race over distances of 135 to 160 statute miles at speeds in excess of 125 miles per hour. What is modified class? Modified class boats are the APBA class that coincide with UIM-2. These boats range from 29 to 40 feet in length. They are allowed up to 750 cubic inch engine displacement from a power plant of automotive or marine block. Modified boats are designated by the letter M on the hull preceding the racing number. This class races over courses of 120 to 135 statute miles at speeds over 115 miles per hour. What is Pro Stock Class? Pro Stock Class is designated by the letter P on the hull preceding the racing number. Pro Stock boats range from 23 to 40 feet in length and are allowed between 500 to 750 cubic inch displacement in stock form depending on engine configuration. The power plants must be of automotive or marine block. Pro Stock boats race over courses from 120 to 135 statute miles at speeds over 105 miles per hour. What is the stock class? This is the smallest of the national offshore classes. It is a way that amateurs may enter the sport at a professional level. Boats can be as small as 21 feet. All rules are set to maintain a true stock class to keep costs to a minimum. This class races over courses from 100 to 135 statute miles at speeds over 95 miles per hour. What are the divisional classes? These four sportsmen's classes are designated for the weekend racer who wants to race his boat competitively on Saturday and then use his boat for recreational purposes on Sunday. These classes accommodate boats from as small as a single 160 cubic inch displacement outboard on a 21 foot V bottom. Larger sportsman class boats range all the way up to 29 feet and up inboards with 1110 cubic inch displacement. Sportsman's class races over courses from 60 to 80 statute miles. What's the difference between a deep V and a catamaran? A deep V is a boat designed to cut through rough water. The V-shaped design with its strakes and chines allows the boat to ride on the rough water at maximum speed. The traditional deep V with its many variations excels on heavy seas as the single plane places less stress on the construction than does the multi-hull catamaran. The deep V is normally eight feet wide. The catamaran design allows a faster run on calmer water. The tunnel design creates a lift similar to that of an airplane wing, minimizing drag. The catamaran configuration with two parallel hulls has become more prominent on the offshore racing scene in recent years. The increased stability of the catamaran design coincides with advances in construction techniques to make the hulls stronger. Until recently, many offshore classes would choose racing with their deep Vs or their catamarans depending on race day conditions. But a 1983 APBA rule change now awards points to the boat, team sponsor, and driver in descending order. This effectively discouraged most two-boat race teams. Nowadays, participants are faced with making the choice well in advance, outfitting a catamaran or a deep V and sticking with it for the duration of the season. Flags, what they mean. In every form of motorsport, flags are used to let the race officials communicate with the competitors on the course. Offshore racing is no different. Even though the race is held on the open waters, flags are a necessary link in the line of communication. 
The yellow flag is a caution flag, unlike auto racing where a yellow flag alerts drivers to an accident, debris, or some other obstacle. Offshore racing uses the yellow flag as a caution during the parade lap. The flag is located in the pace boat. The competitors know to leave the milling area and to follow the pace boat to the starting line when the yellow flag is raised and an orange smoke flare is released. The green flag means the race has started. The officials in the pace boat will show the green flag when the boats are on plane and reach a speed of approximately 65 to 75 miles per hour. The red flag is the danger flag. When the red flag is shown, all boats must stop and return to the milling area. This flag is also placed on the pace boat. A red flag comes about when a boat is disabled in the starting area or if some part of the race course is blocked. The event will be restarted. The black flag is used to cancel the race. This flag will be shown from the start-finish boat and each check boat along the race course. It is primarily used when seas become too dangerous to continue the race. All boats must return to the docks. The orange flag is the offshore flag. All check boats, including the start-finish boat, fly an orange flag with a large black number. The checkered flag is the best-known flag of all. It signifies that the race is over and indicates the winning boat. Each class starts separately. An orange flare signals the beginning of the starting procedure. The offshore one boats then move out of the milling area, which is one to two miles behind the starting line. Racers form a line across the chute and must remain at least 100 yards behind the pace boat, which is now displaying a yellow flag. When the starter determines that the boats are aligned correctly, he drops the yellow flag and waves a green flag. A green flare is ignited at the same time and the boats begin racing. For timing purposes, the official start is when the first boat crosses the start line. As offshore racing fans become more aware of the rules and technology of the sport, they are sometimes still confused by the terminology. The following terms are commonly used in describing offshore racing action. Chine walking is when a boat dances from side to side. This is caused by exceeding the theoretical hull speed or by a lack of balance. Porpoising is a term used to describe a bow to stern dipping action. This can be caused by poor weight distribution, improper design, or improper attitude trimming. Rocking chair action is when a catamaran is so light and so fast that the bow and stern alternately hit the water. This is potentially a dangerous situation. Spin-out is a term used to describe the action of a boat doing a 180-degree turn in place. Stuffing it is when a boat is driven into a wave instead of over the wave. Historically, this has been the major cause of fatalities in offshore racing. Feathering occurs when the throttle man adjusts the throttle to maintain the proper RPMs of the engines while the propellers go in and out of the water. Trim means to level the boat by changing the angle of the outdrives, outboards, or trim tabs. This, in effect, raises and lowers the boat. The throttle man controls the boat's trim. The milling area is where all boats turn in a counterclockwise position off plane until the orange flare is fired and the pace boat picks up each individual class for the start. Each class has its own milling area. We hope you have enjoyed our introduction to offshore and that you'll continue to follow offshore racing all season long, whether through race attendance, newspapers, magazines, TV shows, or racing videos. In an effort to bring offshore racing videos to the home market, Babe Productions is producing racing videos that are affordable to the public for the first time. Babe's Offshore Powerboat Racing Report will feature each race on the national circuit. We will take you behind the scenes into the pits where you will meet the people that shape offshore racing. Besides meeting the people, you'll learn about the latest technology as we visit the shops that produce these incredible racing machines. Every race will be covered comprehensively by our helicopter, land, and boat cameras. For the first time, you'll be able to see inside a race boat during a race and experience the action and drama from the driver's point of view. For dynamic racing action, don't miss our complete series. The Offshore Powerboat Racing Report is available at our video newsstands at each race site.
tapes for the current race are available within approximately 10 days of the race. Don't be left out. Order now. Visit our Babes Video Newsstand at the race site or call 305-386-1154 for more information. You can keep up with the excitement all year long. The next checkered flag is just a tape away.